I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. Most people know that iodine deficiency has been a crisis around the world. Iodine is key to so many of the body's functions, especially the thyroid. I discovered a product being developed by Dr. Group. You now know it as Survival Shield True Nascent Iodine that your body can really absorb. Then, about a year ago, he said, listen, if you think this is powerful, I'm going to come out with rare earth, deep earth crystals. And the results that I personally have had have been life-changing. Nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. This is innovating, and the best part is it helps fund InfoWars.com, the radio show, the TV show, the whole media operation promoting true libertarian ideas. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. Take advantage of this unprecedented 30% off Super Detox Special at InfoWarsLife.com. I've always believed in nutrition and herbs. Super Male Vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals sourced from powerful organic herbs harvested around the planet and then concentrated for maximum potency. I just received my Male Vitality about three days ago and I must say that is good stuff. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula. Super Male Vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only take half the recommended dose. I jump out of bed ready to fight these criminals every day. I look forward to waking up and taking my Super Male Vitality and getting the day started. It's not just the Super Male Vitality. All the products at InfoWarsLife.com are simply amazing. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your Super Male Vitality and other powerful products from InfoWars Life. General, what do you think about the FBI saying that there's a terror alert on Monday about a potential Fort Hood situation? The police are shoving people, shoving Alex, shoving the crowd. Here we go, folks. I'm being assaulted. Whether it's the radio show, the news websites, documentary films, or the nightly news, InfoWars is the tip of the spear. Is this another false flag stage attack to take our civil liberties and put more homeland security on sticking their hands down on the pants on the streets? It's up to us to set brush fires in the minds of men and women everywhere. And that's what PrisonPlanet.tv is designed to do. You watch the Assad regime is going to be blamed or accused of using chemical weapons against the so-called rebels. What we see now is a war against reality. It's a war against the truth. It's more vital than ever that supporters of freedom become members of PrisonPlanet.tv and share their membership with up to 11 friends and family. Visit InfoWarsNews.com today. Become a member, share your membership, and help take the info war to the next level. Alex Jones Show, because there is a war on for your mind. I remember when, I remember Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and I've been talking to Dr. Peter Bregan about DARPA's $100 million brain project. How they say they're going to help veterans with PTSD. Dr. Bregan is someone who has fought against the brutalities of lobotomies that were performed on World War II veterans for the same justification to help them with PTSD. So we've been talking about what's likely to come out of that. I want to continue that discussion with Dr. Bregan, but before we do, I want to tell you this hour of the Alex Jones Show is brought to you by My Patriot Supply. You know, the collapse of the border, the soaring meat prices, it's clear that there is no longer time to wait. You need to start getting prepared today. Go to MyPatriotSupply.com and check out their complete line of preparedness products. My Patriot Supply is the home of the Patriot Pantry line of emergency food storage. If you don't have food, you're no threat to the New World Order. They're counting on you to be ever-dependent slaves in their system of control, but you can fight back. You can establish independence for yourself and for your family by securing your own private supply of storable food. And there's no better way to prepare than this Patriot-owned company. Visit MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex for special offers to listeners of this broadcast. And for a limited time, they're offering additional discounts off their already low price. That website again is MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex. Now, Dr. Bregan, just before the break, you were talking about how 
how crude this is, the, uh, the lobotomies that they did, and, and how crude even their most sophisticated technological approaches are going to be with uh, their latest technology because of the complexity of the human brain. And you said something that I thought was very important, that this is really the real effect of this is going to be to destroy people's minds and at the very best to pacify them, to keep them from being a threat to them. I want people to go back and look at this, uh, this study, this project that came back, I think it was at the end of uh, December. Uh, it's the Forgotten Soldiers. It's a report that the Wall Street Journal did. And in it, they're talking about how the Veterans Administration, quote, performed brain-altering operations on former servicemen that it diagnosed, and listen to this, depressives or psychotics or schizophrenics, and occasionally on people they identified as homosexuals. In the future, will that list include dissidents? Will it include people who don't agree with the government or the people find uh, that they are political opposition? That's not beyond the realm of speculation. That has been done in totalitarian states. That's the most common diagnosis for to get rid of somebody was with, uh, to, to say that they were mentally ill and lock them away in an institution. But I also wanted to tell them this. They, they need to go back and they need to read these stories because I think that's what really drives it home. We can talk in the abstract about what happens with lobotomies, but if they go back and read the case stories of these World War II veterans, one of these fellows, uh, 90 years old, describing his experiences. When they see it personally, I think it'll have an effect on them. And just one last thing before I go back to you, Dr. Bregan. What they said here, that surgery left them, because many people don't understand they've never known anybody with a, a lobotomy. Of course, uh, if you've seen uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, that, that centered uh, on that. And, and, of course, that was written by somebody who was part of a government experiment on mind control. That was uh, uh, the, a guy who was involved in the early experiments of LSD who wrote that novel. But the Wall Street Journal points out that the lobotomy surgery left these men little more than overgrown children unable to care for themselves. Many suffered seizures, amnesia, and loss of motor skills. And some died from the operation itself. So I encourage you to go and look at that if you're not familiar with the effects of that. And think about what's going on with that before you allow someone in your family or before you take that treatment yourself, before you think that DARPA's got some kind of a new magic pill for PTSD. Dr. Bregan. Um, the government has actually participated in this country, at least in one project, um, and using shock treatment to suppress political dissidents. I did a show with 60 Minutes, so we had like three segments about uh, black protesters during the 70s in the Navy who were subjected to shock treatment mm. to control them and to stop them from, uh, from protesting. And shock treatment will stop you from protesting. And uh, shock has been used in our state hospitals uh, Years ago, whole wards would be given shock treatment to make them more docile, more controllable, make them line up at the, uh, you know, on the food lines and do what they were told. Um, if you think about uh, the human brain, I mean, you mentioned a lot of the adverse effects of lobotomy, including some that are more physically obvious. But the fundamental effect of lobotomy is to rob humanity. Because if you think yes. about... The frontal lobes, you know, that's what makes us look different from our dogs and from chimpanzees is we've got this big bulging forehead. And that's the flower of human development. And so if you want to conceive of what lobotomy does, all you have to do is conceive of how you think of a human being. If you think of the human being in spiritual terms or as a, a worshiping God, uh, that's going to be knocked out, diminished or destroyed. If you think of human beings as I do as sources of love and caring, that's going to be one of the very first things to go. If you think about people in terms of their judgment, their insight, their future planning, that's going to be injured. In fact, uh, whenever anybody describes uh, the effects of injuring the frontal lobes of the brain, which all of this research will do. It'll all be directed to some extent at frontal lobes. Uh, whatever the person says the frontal lobes are doing is just a projection of what that person thinks human beings are because it's the seat of our humanity, and that's what they're tampering with. Yeah, that's very eloquently put. 
it's, it's a very frightening prospect, especially when we remember, as we recounted in the earlier segments, the history of all these experiments, as, as you mentioned, uh, using electroshock therapy to stop dissidents. Uh, we know that this is something that they're going to do. And as your wife pointed out, this black box project where they want to record what's going on in your mind, we know that they want to know and control everything about us. I want to move on to another topic that has been one that you've been on the forefront of fighting against, and that is the uh, SSRI drugs and the uh, what we call here murder pills. Could you talk to the audience about that and, and your concerns about that? Well, I was the scientific expert for all of the combined Prozac suits back in the 1990s. So I literally got inside Eli Lilly and then later in, inside other drug companies. And I can tell you that they actively suppressed all the data they were getting on violence and suicide and on the ineffectiveness of the drug. For example, when Eli Lilly would get a report from a doctor saying that his patient, had, even one of their own researchers, uh, saying that a patient had committed suicide probably caused by the drug, they would change their own investigator's report to no drug effect mm. or emotional instability. Um, when all the reports of violence came out, they didn't research their own data to see about this. They formed a committee to counter it, and they met secretly. This is not a conspiracy. It's a fact. Mm -hmm. this, they met secretly in early morning hours with the FDA to avoid the press or anybody seeing Eli Lilly coming and going with the FDA to cover this up. Oh. The latest scientific research shows that if you take all the studies sent to the FDA for antidepressants, not just the cherry-picked ones, see, the, the company will do maybe six studies, seven studies, and then they'll cherry-pick two, and those will be the studies used to prove the drug is effective. Well, if you look at all the studies, latest research, the antidepressants don't work. They're ineffective. And then if you look at additional research, it's clear they cause violence and suicide, psychosis and mania. So we have tons of evidence that they don't work and tons of evidence that they are causing horrible mental aberrations by disrupting the function of the brain. And there's just no doubt about this. Um, and every time anymore. we have a, a mass shooting, we always know that there's going to eventually come out that the person was on some kind of SSRI drug. Uh, that seems to be the common thread in all of these. They're, they're coming from all different walks of life, different ages, different social conditions, and yet that seems to be the common thread. Well, there, uh, the way I've evaluated it is there are three common threads. One is nearly every single one has been through psychiatry. Whether they're on a drug or not, Mm -hmm. Nearly everyone has been through psychiatry. That means beefing up psychiatry isn't going to save us from violence. Psychiatrists yeah. make people violent by humiliating them, which is the ultimate source emotionally of most violence, is feeling humiliated and impotent. So psychiatry makes people feel that way with the diagnoses, the drugs, the hospitals. So, And it doesn't identify violence because there's no particular ability to do that within psychiatry. So one thing is they've all, almost all of them, been through psychiatry. Secondly, many of them, maybe not all, certainly not all, but many of them were actively taking psychiatric drugs at the time. And not just SSRIs, but also other kinds of antidepressants, benzodiazepines, uh, which can disinhibit like alcohol, and stimulants, which can drive people over the edge. Um, and the press has lied about this. I was a medical expert in several suits surrounding uh, Columbine. Um, and what I found was that Eric Harris, one of the two youngsters who committed this atrocity and then killed each other, these, Eric was taking an antidepressant for a whole year with increasing doses. He was taking Luvox, which is an SSRI, fluvoxamine is his technical name. Mm -hmm. And he had a blood level of this drug from the coroner's office and also reported to the FDA and the blood level in his system at the time of the shooting. It was ironically called a therapeutic level 
of the drug <laughs> Luvox. And then you get the major media, USA Today, for example, recently coming out with a story reviewing what happened at Columbine and saying we now know that Eric Harris wasn't taking psychiatric drugs at the time. Well, he was. And I can track through his record that he was.